to another lesson in the TI30X Plus Math Print student course. In this lesson, we'll be covering the random number command and the random integer command. To access these commands, press second and then the factorial NCR NPR key. That takes us to the random menu and you see there the commands rand and rand int. Now rand uh, is short for random. It generates what we call a pseudo random number between zero and one. We say pseudo random because the calculator doesn't generate true random numbers. These pseudo random numbers are generated by a formula. To start this formula, which is known as seeding the calculator, we firstly store an integer or a seed value greater than zero. To do this, we're going to quit out of this, go back to the home screen, then we're going to uh, start our seeding process. So I'm going to choose the number four to be our seed value. So I press four and then I'm going to store it. So I press the store key and then I press second and then access the RAN command. Press one or enter and then press enter. Now I've chosen four. A good choice for you is your mobile phone number without the leading zero. And I'll explain why just in a moment. Now let's generate a random number between zero and one. To do this, again, we press second and then the factorial NCR NPR button, one or enter for rand and then press enter. Now we have a random number between zero and one. To generate further random numbers between zero and one, it's just a matter of pressing enter, enter, enter. Now, note that it's very important here that if two or more calculators start with the same seed value, they will generate the same sequence of random values. We can also uh, apply formulae here and obtain random numbers of a different form rather than between zero and one. For example, to generate random numbers between zero and 10, for example, we could use the formula rand times 10. So here we would press second and then the factorial NCR NPR button, paste rand onto the home screen by pressing one or enter. And if we want numbers between zero and 10, then what we can do is multiply by 10. And that gives us a random number between zero and 10. The second random feature that we want to look at today is if we press second and then the factorial NCR NPR button is rand int, which is short for random integer. And what it does is it generates a random integer between two integers A and B. So for example, to simulate or to act out the rolling of a six sided die, what we could do is press uh, number two to paste randint onto the home screen. Now the syntax here is we enter the lower value first. So for a six sided die, that is one. Then we press second and the decimal point to access the comma. The maximum value you can obtain on a six sided die is a six. And then to close the operation, we press the closing bracket and we press enter. And we see there that we've simulated the rolling of a six sided die and obtained a six. To generate further results, we can continually press enter. So for example, the next roll is a four, the next roll is a two. We can also simulate or act out the rolling of two six sided uh, dice on the home screen. And we can do this as follows. We press second and then our factorial button, number two to access randint, and then one, and then we paste in a comma, and then six, and then closing bracket. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, press the addition key plus, so we've 
essentially we've set up the rolling of one die and now we do the same for the second die. So second and then the factorial NCR NPR button, two and then one and then we add the comma and then six uh, and then closing bracket and press enter and that's given us the sum of uh, the results. So the sum or the total for rolling the two dice is four. Obtaining um, further results can be accessed by pressing enter. So we end up with a five and then another five, a seven, 11, uh, et cetera. Now, these values uh, can be noted and then entered into a list. And you could do such things as evaluate the average um, total from your trials. Uh, you can also go in and perform these operations actually in the lists. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.